Hello, this is Dr. Stanley Kim. Currently, I'm working at Maine Health Cancer Care Center in Sanford, uh, Maine, the country of lobsters and the clam chowder. Yummy. Today, we will discuss side effects of immunotherapy. Immunotherapy has changed the way we treat cancer patients for good. Among several different kinds of immunotherapy, immune checkpoint inhibitors are most widely studied and used nowadays. The commonly used immune checkpoint inhibitors are pembrolizumab, the uh, brand name Keytruda, uh, nivolumab, uh, Optibo, and uh, ipilimumab, your boy, and others. These immune checkpoint inhibitors make our T cells stronger so that they can attack and kill cancer cells more effectively. But it can come with some side effects. It's like a Mike Tyson knocked down the referee, innocent referee during that heated boxing games. So it's important to understand the side effects and how to manage them. We will discuss more detail and thank you for watching. Immune-related adverse events are side effects and toxicity caused by immune checkpoint inhibitors, which are seen in up to 70 to 80 percent of patients, but most cases are mild and the patients can continue immunotherapy. Usually occur in one to two months after immunotherapy, but may occur even one year after immunotherapy was discontinued. They may involve the skin causing dermatitis, GI system, colitis, hepatitis, lung pneumonitis, endocrine system, thyroid disease, adrenal insufficiency, and inflammation of pituitary gland, diabetes mellitus, and the blood causing hemolytic anemia, thrombocytopenia, uh, even hemo hemophilia A. Immune checkpoint inhibitors include PD-1 inhibitors such as pembrolizumab, nivolumab, PD-L1 inhibitors, atezolizumab, or duval duvalumab, CTL1, uh, CTLA-4 inhibitors, uh, include Iplomumab and Tremelimumab, LAG3 inhibitors, Relatlimab. In general, patients receiving PD uh, inhibitors have a lower instance of immune-related adverse events than those treated with CTLA4 inhibitors such as uh, Iplomumab. But combination of both anti-PD and the CTLA4 inhibitors increase the instance and the severity of the uh, toxicity and the time of onset is earlier. Interestingly, uh, immune-related adverse events in patients treated uh, this, this immune checkpoint inhibitors are often associated with a better outcome and better prognosis. I must tell you that uh, management strategy of immune-related adverse events here is mostly from case reports and the small studies. And the post, uh, prospective studies supporting these strategies are lacking. But I use the uh, uh, ESCO and the ESMO European guidelines and to add my personal experience. Immune related skin toxicities are common, but usually simple rash or inflammatory dermatosis. But bullous dermatosis or severe cutaneous adverse event uh, reactions are more serious. Grade 1 toxicity is defined as rash covering less than 10% of body surface area with or without symptoms. And you continue immunotherapy with a topical uh, therapy, emollients or corticosteroids. In grade 2, rash is covering 10 to 30% of body surface area and uh, you consider holding immunotherapy and monitor weekly. Again, topical therapy, antihistamine, and consider a uh, smaller dose, lower dose of prednisone. If not better in four weeks, treat it, treat it as a, a grade three. In grade three, rash is covering more than 30% with a, uh, moderate and the severe symptoms, limiting activities of daily livings. Then we uh, hold the uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors and consult with dermatology. And the higher dose of prednisone, about 60 milligrams a day, is given. But patients with a, a itching only without a rash, gabapentin or Lyrica may be tried without corticosteroid. For bullous dermatosis, which is more serious, consider admission and uh, give uh, IV methylprednisolone, uh, solimedrol, a uh, higher dose. 
In G4, patients have a severe toxicity requiring hospitalization, and they immediately hold the uh, immunotherapy and give high dose of uh, solimedrol. But if bullous famfigoid, IVIG, uh, immunoglobulin infusion, and the rituximab can be used to avoid the corticosteroid, what is the bullous famfigoid? Please look at this picture. Severe cutaneous adverse reaction scar include the Steven Johnson syndrome, toxic epidermal necrolysis, drug rash with eosinophilia, drug-induced hypersensitivity syndrome, acute generalized exanthematous pustulosis. Any grade of these severe cutaneous adverse reactions with the mucous membrane involvement require discontinuation of immunotherapy and the dermatologic consultation and uh, consider early admission to a burn center and we give a high dose of uh, solimedrol. This picture is the uh, toxic epidermal necrolysis. Immune-related colitis, enterocolitis, is common uh, occurring up to 50% of patients who receive CTLA-4 inhibitor like uh, ipilimumab, but less common with a PD-1, pd one inhibitors like uh, Keytruda or nivolumab occurs in two to three months after immunotherapy, but can occur early in uh, one to two weeks, or it may occur even immunotherapy was discontinued. Most common symptoms are diarrhea with or without abdominal pain. The G1 toxicity is defined as increase of less than four stools per day over baseline, and the patients can continue immune checkpoint inhibitor or hold it temporarily and use Imodium if Infection is ruled out in patients with a diarrhea only. In G2, uh, patients have increase of four to six stools per day over baseline. Then patients need to hold immunotherapy and manage as a G1, like a Imodium. If it's not improved, then start the prednisone about 60 milligrams a day and the taper over four to six weeks if improved. If it's not improved with the uh, uh, prednisone in 72 hours, uh, then consider infliximab, uh, tissue necrosis factor inhibitor, or uh, vedolizumab, anti-integrin antibody, use it for the ulcerative colitis. Endoscopic evaluation, colonoscopy is highly recommended to stratify patients for early treatment with infliximab or vedolizumab, and to evaluate before resuming uh, immunotherapy after improvement. Fecal calprotectin, uh, less than 100 16 microgram per gram of stool may be considered as a surrogate for endoscopic and the histologic remission. After patients improved, then uh, consider resuming the uh, PD-1, PD-L1 agents like a uh, Hitruda nivolumab. But the CTLA-4 inhibitor, ipilimumab is kind of risky, but still can be considered in select cases like in patients who have not yet responded or whose response is inadequate to get the uh, 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 immunotherapy uh, response. In G3, grade 3, the uh, increase of more than 7 stools per day over baseline, and the manage like a G2, like a prednisone, uh, in severe case, even IV solimedro, methylprednisolone, and the consider infliximab or vedolizumab in addition to corticosteroid in patients with high risk features like a large or multiple ulcers, extensive colitis beyond the left colon, or patients did not have an adequate response to uh, steroid, like a persistent symptoms even after 72 hours of therapy. Fecal microbiota transplantation through the colonoscopy, not by mouth has been reported successful in fractory uh, cases and to consider hospitalization for hydration or electro, uh, dehydration or in electrolyte imbalance. And in this case, you have to really consider permanently discontinue the eclomumab GTLA-4 inhibitor. And the G4, grade 4 toxicity is life-threatening and urgent intervention is indicated. Immune-related uh, gastritis is less common and managed as if colitis. I occasionally see uh, immune-related hepatitis in my clinical practice, 
which occurs in 5 to 10 percent with the immune checkpoint monotherapy, but mostly uh, mild cases. Grade 1 toxic toxicity is defined as asymptomatic elevation of ALT or AST uh, up to three times upper normal limits or total bilirubin uh, up to 1.5 times upper normal limit. Patients can continue uh, immunotherapy with a close monitoring with the labs every one to two weeks. In grade two toxicity, patients have asymptomatic ALT or ASD elevation, uh, three to five times upper normal limit or total bilirubin, 1.5 to three times upper normal limit. Patients need to hold immunotherapy temporarily and to stop unnecessary hepatotoxic drugs like a statin for hypercholesterolemia and other hepato uh, hepatotoxic uh, oncology drugs like a targeted therapy if patients takes with immunotherapy and to check liver function test and PT twice a week and to check hepatitis profile, viral count, iron study to rule out hemat hemochromatosis if uh, suspicious and to consider imaging imaging studies like a ultrasound CT MRI to rule out metastasis or thrombosis of uh, portal vein or hepatic veins and the considered hepatology consultation. If it's not better uh, in three to five days then small dose of prednisone like a 20, 30, 60 milligrams a day uh, is started. And if patients improve, then resume immune, immunotherapy after tapering uh, steroid prednisone to less than 10 milligrams a day. If patients does not respond, then increase prednisone to one to two milligram per kg per day. And if still no improvement, then consider adding mycophenylate, which is Celseft. Be careful, infliximab is contraindicated in immune uh, hepatitis due to hepatotoxicity. In grade three toxicity, patients have ALT, AST uh, elevation of five to 20 times upper normal limit and the total bilirubin three to 10 times upper normal limit. When the ALT SCT goes over 400 with a rising bilirubin, uh, consider inpatient monitoring and also give a uh, high dose of methylprednisolone uh, solimedrol, 2 mg per kg, and to consider liver biopsy if not responding to this uh, steroid to rule out non alcoholic steatohepatitis or metastasis or other tumor or drug-induced hepatitis or infection. If infection ruled out, then consider adding mycophenolate, Celsept, uh, as a thioprim and the tocilizumab. Tocilizumab is a uh, interleukin-6 inhibitors and consider permanently discontinue uh, immunotherapy with uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors. In grade uh, four toxicity, patients very sick. Uh, ALT is, is the over 20 times normal limit, total bilirubin more than 10 times upper normal limit. And the patients have a, uh, ascites, coagulopathy, encephalopathy, and the patients need to have a high dose of uh, solumedrol. Immune-related cholangitis should be treated as with the uh, also deoxycholic acid and the uh, corticosteroid like a prednisone. Immune uh, pancreatitis is rare and the routine amylase and the lipase is not recommended. Immune related lung toxicity, mostly pneumonitis or interstitial lung disease, is rare uh, with an instance of 2.7%, but can be serious and the life-threatening. The median onset time to onset is about eight, nine months. Other rare entities are immune-related bronchiolitis or sarcoidosis. It's more common with the uh, PD-1, PD-L1 inhibitors than uh, CTLA-4 inhibitors, but 
most common with a combination of those two. Symptoms are pretty much nonspecific. Symptoms of pneumonia or interstitial lung disease, cough, shortness of breath, wheezing, chest pain, fatigue, with or without fever. The workup should include a CT scan of the chest with IV contrast to rule out other lung diseases like a pulmonary embolism, infectious pneumonia, uh, tumor progression. And the four uh, more symptomatic patients, sputum culture sensitivity, nasal swab for viral disease or COVID-19 test, uh, COVID-19, and the considered bronchoscopy with a uh, bronchoalveolar lavage. But mostly transbronchial biopsy is generally not required unless to rule out other causes like a lymphangitic spread or uh, infection. What is the uh, CT findings? Those are pretty much nonspecific, but uh, common findings are organizing pneumonia pattern and the ground glass opacities or patch nodular infiltrates, predominantly in the uh, middle or lower lobes. Please look at these pictures. This uh, ground glass opac opacities with uh, some nodular uh, densities here. When it compared with a targeted therapy induced uh, pneumonitis, uh, this immune related uh, lung toxici toxicities are more often focal because this drug induced pneumonia are more diffuse. And the immune related sarcoidosis like granulomas have often uh, subpleural micronodules, hyla lymphadenopathy, and the pleural effusion. In grade 1 toxicity, patients have no symptoms, and uh, imaging studies show the uh, uh, pathology confined to one lobe of lung or less than 25% of lung parenchyma, just like this picture. And the patients can either hold immunotherapy or continue with uh, close monitoring. And uh, if the patient's symptoms become symptomatic, then you need to do more frequent chest x-ray or CT scan. And uh, you may order the uh, pulmonary function test and the consider sputum uh, test to screen for viral disease and other bacterial infection like a mycoplasma, legionella, depending on the clinical context. And uh, once the patients improve with a radiological improvement, then you may resume the uh, immune checkpoint immunotherapy. Otherwise, treat as uh, grade 2 or 3, 4. In grade 2 toxicity, patients become symptomatic, and the pathology involves uh, more than one lobe or 25%, 20 to 50% of lung parenchyma, and the symptoms worsen, just like this picture here more than one lobe or 25 to 50% involvement. And the patients need to hold the immunotherapy and the start antibiotics if infection suspected. I think it's mostly, it's good to give empirical antibiotics. And the monitor symptoms daily and the CT chest with contrast and again sputum or blood urine culture if uh, uh, infection suspected. If there is no evidence of infection or no improvement with antibiotics after 48 hours, then prednisone uh, 1 milligram, like a 60 milligrams a day. And the mostly uh, they will improve. But if it's not better after 48 hours, then manage as a uh, G3. And the, for G2 toxicity, still consider bronchoscopy with a uh, bronchoalveolar lavage. But normally, uh, we don't do the uh, endobronchial biopsy in this case. And the repeat chest x-ray weekly and the pulmonary or, and, uh, or ID consultation as needed. Once the patient's recovered from G2 toxicity, then you may consider rechallenge uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy.
In grade 3 toxicity, patients have severe symptoms, shortness of breath, and the hospitalization is required. Uh, it involves all lung lo lobes or more than 50% of lung parenchyma, just, just like this. Worsening hypoxia. And the G4 is life threatening. Patients need to discontinue immune checkpoint inhibitor permanently, and the empiric antibiotics and the methylprednisolone, uh, 1 to 2 mg per kg per day. And the pulmonary and the ID consultation is uh, needed. Patients probably need to have a bronchoscopy uh, if tolerated. If there is no improvement after 48 hours of high dose of steroid, then uh, next step is to add IVIG, immunoglobulin. This IVIG is especially good for potential infection. Or infliximab, or tocilizumab, or uh, Celsept, mycophenolate IV, or cyclophosphamide. If improved, the taper off prednisone uh, over four to six weeks. Sarcoidosis, like a granulomatose inflammation, is rare, and they mostly respond to holding uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor or uh, prednisone therapy. Immune uh, hypothyroidism is the most common endocrine disorders occurring in 9% of patients treated with anti-PD uh, immunotherapy but less common with the CTLA-4 uh, therapy. It may be preceded by thyroiditis, the inflammation of the thyroid gland, and the hyperthyroid state, which may be subclinical. Most cases occur within three months after therapy. The symptoms of hypothyroidism are generalized, weakness, fatigue, uh, uh, weight gain, uh, constipation, uh, slow heartbeat, the hyperthyroidism is less common than hypothyroidism, occurring in 2 to 5% of patients. Before you start the immunotherapy, the baseline endocrine panel includes TSH and the free T4. You may add a free T3 or AM cortisol. And then, as patients is receiving uh, immunotherapy, then TSH and the free T4 every cycle for the first three months, then every other cycle if uh, thyroid function remains normal. Cortisol level is ordered as indicated by suspicious symptoms like a severe fatigue or a falling TSH. But I always uh, order the cortisol as a baseline panel and uh, uh, every other cycles of immunotherapy. It's my personal preference. Thyroiditis often causes hyperthyroidism in the beginning, and the thyroiditis is self-limiting, and the initial hyperthyroidism generally resolves in several weeks. Then uh, patients become uh, gradually hypothyroid, and occasionally to normal thyroid. Grave disease is very rare. The toxicity level is grade 1. Uh, patients have no symptoms, just have abnormal thyroid function. And in G2, patients become symptomatic, required, medication required, like a thyroid medication for hypothyroidism. And the G3 to G4 is a severe and life-threatening. When you see the high TSH and the normal or low free T4, these patients most likely have a hypothyroidism. If there is no symptoms, just repeat the thyroid function next cycle or treat with a uh, thyroxine if symptomatic, or TSH is over 10. Patients can continue immune checkpoint inhibitors. When the patients have a normal or low TSH and the high uh, free T4, then patients likely have a hyperthyroidism. If there is no symptoms, again, repeat the next cycle. If the symptomatic, then you have to use beta blocker like a metoprolol, uh, tenolol, and to check the uh, thyroid peroxidase antibody to see if patients have a uh, Hashimoto thyroiditis. And the thyroid uptake scan, if patients doesn't feel well with the symptoms, then you hold immune checkpoint inhibitor until symptom controlled. 
When the patients have a painful thyroiditis due to inflammation, then consider prednisone uh, lower dose, 0.5 milligram per kg per day and the taper. And the endocrinology consultation is required for persistent high thyrotoxicosis because patients may need to have an antithyroid uh, medication. When the patients have a low TSH, normal or low free T4, then you suspect the uh, central hypothyroidism due to pituitary dysfunction, the uh, hypophysitis. And the very often patients have a uh, concurrent adrenal insufficiency. Then you must check the uh, uh, AM cortisol level. When the patients have a severe symptoms of three, uh, grade three or four, you hold the uh, immune checkpoint until symptom resolves to baseline. And the hospital admission when the patients develop bradycardia, hypodermia, or altered mental status. You must remember when the patients present with a combined hypothyroidism and adrenal insufficiency, which is often seen in the central uh, hypothyroidism, like a, due to a pituitary dysfunction, you must give the uh, 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 corticosteroids before you start the thyroid function of uh, thyroid medication because when you give uh, thyroid medication before you give corticosteroid patients may develop uh, adrenal crisis which could be life-threatening immune related adrenal insufficiency is rare but I've seen the few cases during my practice patients complain severe weakness very tired, you can even cannot get up to go to grocery market. And uh, you know, uh, we do the uh, baseline cortisol level in my practice. And once you suspect adrenal insufficiency, then you have to order the uh, uh, BMP and the AM, ACTH and the cortisol levels, along with the uh, renin and the aldosterone. And the consider ACTH stimulation test if it's equ equivocal and they evaluate uh, for any precipitating causes like infection. And the CT scan uh, of the uh, abdomen, especially adrenal glands, is uh, necessary to rule out metastasis or hemorrhage in the adrenal glands. In G1 toxicity, patient is the asymptomatic or have a very mild symptoms. You consider holding uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor until patient stabilized on replacement therapy and the endocrine consultation is required. You initiate hydrocortisone uh, uh, 10 milligram in the morning, 5 milligram in the evening in the, uh, for mild cases, and the titrate up to 30 milligrams a day for resi residual symptoms. Then once the patients feel much better and the symptom relieved and reduce the maintenance dosing, usually uh, 20 milligrams, 15, 20 milligrams a day. And the most primary adrenal insufficiency will also require uh, fluorinac, those are mineral or corticoid. In G2, patients have a moderate symptoms, and the, but able to perform activities of daily living though. You initiate the outpatient corticosteroid therapy at two, three times of uh, maintenance dose, which means hydrocortisone 30 to 50, 50 milligrams uh, a day. Then uh, you also initiate uh, fluorinac, and the decrease this stress dose uh, down to maintenance dose, which is about 15, 20 milligrams a day after several days. Uh, in G3 or 4, patients have a se severe symptoms and even life-threatening. Hold the uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors until patients stabilized or replacement hormone is given. Endocrine consultation uh, is necessary. Admit the patients for IV normal saline, about two liters, and they give IV stress dose uh, hydrocortisone 50 to 100 milligrams every six to eight hours initial dosing. And they taper the stress dose down to the oral, oral maintenance dose over five to seven days. Again, while all patients, including central adrenal insufficiency, need education on stress dosing for medical illness, surgery, and other stress conditions, because when the patients are under stress, the requirement of cortical steroid hormone is increased. If you don't increase the 
dosage to stress dose, the patients may develop adrenal insufficiency. Immune-related hypophysitis is caused by the uh, pituitary gland inflammation by immune checkpoint inhibitors. Please look at this picture. The pituitary gland locates in the middle of the uh, lower part of the brain, comprising three different lobes, anterior lobe or the ACTH, adrenocorticotropin hormone, and the TSH, thyroid stimulating hormone, growth hormone, FSH, LH, and the prolactins are secreted. And the intermediate lobe or the melatonin stimulating hormone is secreted. And the posterior lobe or antidiuretic hormone, ADH, and the oxytocin are uh, uh, produced. So when you suspect the uh, uh, hypophysitis, you need to order the ACTH, TSH, uh, not the growth hormone, FSH, LH, and the uh, prolactin when the patients have a lactation, and the ADH for uh, diabetes in spirus. And again, uh, you need to order the MRI scan of the brain, uh, especially pituitary uh, panel, to see the uh, uh, pituitary inflammation. In addition, you need to order the uh, TSH, uh, free T4, uh, base, basic electrolyte imbalance uh, uh, panels, and the uh, uh, morning cort cortisol levels. Always consider the uh, endocrine consultation. In grade one toxicity, patients is asymptomatic or have mild symptoms like a mild fatigue, anorexia, or but no headache. And to consider holding uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor until patients stabilized on replacement hormone therapy. I mentioned that uh, when you suspect the uh, hypophysitis uh, and the patients presented with the uh, uh, symptoms of both hypothyroidism and the adrenal insufficiency, or you suspect that you always initiate with the corticosteroid before you, you give a thyroid hormone to uh, prevent the adrenal crisis. And uh, you don't give a, a steroid in grade one toxicity. In grade two, patients have a moderate symptoms like a headache, but no visual symptoms you withhold uh, immune checkpoint until hormone therapy uh, is replaced with replaced and they give a prednisone one milligram per kg after pituitary access labs and the taper off over one to two weeks uh, to the maintenance dosage other hormone replacement uh, as uh, grade one toxicity to monitor tsh and the free t4 and the severe symptoms, G34, is sometimes life-threatening. You hold the uh, immune checkpoint and uh, admit the patients for IV normal saline, IV stress dose with a high dose of IV met methylprednisone, and then you taper off, um, move to maintenance dose. Immune-related diabetes mellitus is caused by autoimmune destruction of insulin-secreting pancreatic islet cells resulting in a permanent and irreversible insulin-dependent state. The instance is rare, about 1%, and the median onset is after about three to five cycles of immunotherapy. The immune-related diabetes mellitus is basically type 1 diabetes, but should be distinguished from much more common hy simple hypoglycemia or type 2 diabetes due to patients' pre-existing disease or uh, corticosteroid exposure during the therapy. So the lab should include electrolytes with anion gap, urine and the serum ketones, anti-islet cell antibody or anti-GAD antibody standing for uh, glutamine, glutamic acid decarboxylase, which are usually positive in about 50% of cases, and the C-peptide level, which is uh, low in uh, immune type 1 diabetes mellitus. Insulin should be used at any case with a significant hypoglycemia pending additional diagnostic workup. And for new onset immune uh, diabetes mellitus, insulin should be started immediately with a total daily dose about 20 to 30 units per day 
and the half are given as a long acting and the other half as a multiple or a sliding scale injections. And the patient need to have a uh, need to check blood sugar at least four times a day or use continuous glucose monitor. Patients presenting with a ketoacidosis should be admitted and the four uh, immune diabetes mellitus, high dose corticosteroid or immunosuppressive drugs are not indicated. Once diabetes is under control and then uh, patients can resume the uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor immunotherapy with a continued uh, insulin therapy. Now, immune-related musculoskeletal toxicities, which include immune inflammatory arthritis, immune polymyalgia rheumatica, and the immune myositis. Among these, inflammatory arthritis and the polymyalgia are more common than myositis, but myositis can be very serious. Symptoms of uh, immune arthritis include of course, the joint pain, swelling, muscle pain, and sometimes weakness. The symptoms of polymyalgia rheumatica include acute bilateral shoulder and or hip pain with the morning stiffness and the possible swelling of the joints. Even myositis, patients uh, complain muscle pain and the weakness, especially of axial limb girdle and the bulbar muscles, which, which involves the uh, swallowing voice and even ocular muscles. So patients can develop some uh, eye vision problems, diplopia. Workup include rheumatological history and atherosynthesis to, to analyze the joint fluid. Of course, ESR and CRP. Please note, the, in arthritis and the polymyalgia, MRI and the EMG are usually negative and the ANA, rheumatoid factor and anti-CCP antibody and the CK, the creatine uh, kinase, are usually normal. But in immune myositis, we expect the uh, elevated CK aldolase, LDH, even transaminase. And when the cardiac muscle is involved, then troponin will be uh, high. And uh, uh, MRI and the EMG with or without biopsies are done, and the, which uh, often abnormal. In immune myositis, Concomitant myosthenia gravis may occur. In that case, please check the anti-cholinergic uh, receptor antibody and the anti-striational antibody. Interestingly, pain is usually relieved by corticosteroid or non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, but not by opioids. And the early referral to rheumatology and the neurology is warranted. When the patients uh, present with a severe symptoms, extremely severe pain or, uh, or swallowing difficulties, please admit to the hospital. The toxicity level, grade one toxicity, patients have a mild symptoms. Patients can continue the immunotherapy uh, with a treatment with the uh, acetaminophen and non steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. But for immune myositis with a high CK aldolase and the muscle weakness, a low dose of prednisone, 0.5 milligrams, may be offered. But when the patients present with the myocarditis symptoms, chest pain, you know, the, and then elevate troponin, you immediately discontinue immune checkpoint inhibitor and the start IV uh, uh, steroid, high dose. Usually they need to be admitted. In G2, grade 2 toxicity, patients have moderate symptoms. Then you withhold immune checkpoint inhibitor and start prednisone lower dose, 10 to 20 milligrams a day. If there is no improvement in four weeks, then treat as G, uh, grade 3. If unable to lower prednisone dose below 10 milligrams a day, then you consider DMARDs, disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drugs, which include methotrexate, uh, hydro, hydroxychloroquine, the, and then sulfasalazine, infliximab, which is anti uh, uh, tissue necrosis factor alpha antagonist, and the tocilizumab IL-6 inhibitor, and the test for a, a viral hepatitis B and C and the active TB before you start the uh, uh, this DMARDs treatments. Please note the uh, IL-6 inhibitor, uh, which is the infliximab, can, may cause colon perforation. So 
you don't use it for concomitant uh, colitis. And the rituximab is used for myositis only. For severe symptoms or severe pain muscle weakness, then of course you hold the uh, immunotherapy and they give a prednisone of 30, 40, 60 milligrams a day. If it's not improved in two weeks, then consider uh, DMARD these. And uh, for immune myositis, uh, I said the uh, um, uh, rituximab can be used. And uh, in severe case, plasma pheresis and the IVIGs are used. Immune related kidney injuries like nephritis and acute kidney injuries are rare and mostly mild. Immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy appears to be safe in patients with a baseline renal impairment from non-immune basis. But renal transplant patients are at high risk of resection, especially with the PD-1 pathway blockers like a, a pembrolizumab or nivolumab. Among several different types, acute interstitial nephritis is the most common type. So we check the serum creatinine before uh, immunotherapy and uh, before each uh, cycle. And the once the uh, kidney function is uh, uh, abnormal, then need to uh, monitor weekly. But routine urinalysis is not necessary. For those with a new elevation in creatinines, holding therapy should be considered and the other causes searched for, like a nephrotoxic drugs, IV contrast, dehydration, UTI, etc. Grade 1 toxicity, the creatine level increase more than 0.3 or creatinine 1.5 times above baseline. Consider temporarily holding immune checkpoint and look for other causes. In grade 2 toxicity, creatine is 1.5 to 3 times above baseline. Then you hold the uh, uh, immunotherapy temporarily and they get a nephrologist consultation. If there is no other causes ele to elevate the uh, 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 creatinine level, then start the lower dose of prednisone up to 60 mg a day. If there is no improvement, increase the uh, double the dosage mm -hmm. and permanently discontinue uh, immunotherapy. If improved, then taper off over four weeks and resume the uh, immune checkpoint once uh, glucocorticoids dose is successfully uh, tapered below 10 mg a day. In grade 3, creatine is over three times baseline or creatine total value is four, over 4.0. Then hospitalization is indicated and permanent discontinue immunotherapy. And they give a, a high dose of prednisone for, prednisone and for acute kidney injury. And if elevation persists three to five days or worsened, consider additional immunosuppressants like infliximab as a theoprene, cyclophosphamide, and the cyclosporine, and the cell set. In G4, creatine is over six times normal, is life-threatening, dialysis indicated. Immune-related neurological toxicities include myasthenia gravis, myasthenia gravis with a myositis overlap, aseptic meningitis, encephalitis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, peripheral neuropathy, autonomic neuropathy, and uh, demyelinating disorders like uh, multiple sclerosis, optic neuritis, and transverse myelitis. Even in grade 1 toxicity, or the patients have uh, mild symptoms, hold the immune checkpoint inhibitor and uh, obtain neurologic, neurology consultation. Except for the uh, very mild grade 1 peripheral neuropathy or demyelinating disorders, where I, uh, immunotherapy can be continued with a close monitoring. In grade 2 toxicity, where patients have moderate symptoms, hold the immunotherapy and obtain urology consultation and avoid drugs with risk of worsening myasthenia gravis when the patients have a muscle weakness, uh, which include beta blockers, magnesium, pluroquinolone like a levaquin, aminoglycosides, macrolide antibiotics like erythromycin, azathromycin. And they consider neurological tests, including MRI scan of the brain or spinal cord as necessary. And the lumbar puncture pulmonary function test uh, for myasthenia gravis, as, uh, acetylcholine receptor antibody and the anti-striated muscle antibody. 
If those are negative and you still suspect for the myasthenia gravis, then you order the second line test, including muscle specific kinase and the LPR4 antibody. Of course, you add the ESR or a CRP and the EMG for the muscle weakness. For cardiac involvement, cardiac muscle involvement, uh, cardiac MRI and the echocardiogram is included. Myasthenia gravis and the Guillain Barre syndrome have a no grade 1 or 2 toxicities. All are grade 3 or 4. Three or four. Those symptoms like a weakness limiting walking, any dysphagia, facial weakness, or rapidly progress, progress symptoms, prednisone is initiated, 0.5 mg per kg per day. And the for myasthenia gravis, uh, pyridostigmine is used. Glucocorticoid steroid, uh, glucocorticoids, prednisone is also used for Guillain-Barre syndrome, uh, immune-related Guillain-Barre syndrome. But please note, for the idiopathic regular Guillain-Barre syndrome, we don't use the corticosteroids. In life-threatening cases, high dose of methylprednisolone, pulse therapy, solimedrol, one gram a day for five days is used. If there is no improvement with the corticosteroid, then uh, IVIG uh, total uh, two grams per kg over five days, or plasma pheresis, or both are used. And uh, consider adding retrux, 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 Rituxim, uh, rituximab and uh, uh, DMARDS. This is mortifying anti-rheumatic drugs. And uh, please note, uh, you have to practice extreme caution with the re-challenging with the severe cases, even after complete resolution of the symptoms. Immune-related hematological toxicities include hemolytic anemia, ITP, TTP, hemolytic uremic syndrome, aplastic anemia, lymphopenia, hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis, and acquired hemophilia A. Major hematological toxicity is rare, and the most cases are resolved with holding immune checkpoint inhibitors and the corticosteroids. Please remember there is high prevalence of negative DAT, uh, drag Coombs test, in immune autoimmune uh, immune related autoimmune hemolytic anemia 40 percent in case of suspected immune hematological toxicities the uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy should be withheld especially with the abrupt onset and the uh, exercise low threshold of bone marrow biopsy and aspiration but for gradual development of mild hemolytic anemia hemoglobin over 10 gram or thrombocytopenia uh, platelet count over 75,000, immune checkpoint inhibitor may be continued with a close monitoring. The, for management, the each hematological toxicity is managed according to each type. For example, a plus anemia with the growth factors, uh, called agglutinin disease with the rituximab because corticosteroid is not usually effective, TTP with the plasma pheresis and the IVIG. For hemophilia A, uh, corticosteroid and the factor infusion as necessary. And the hemophagocytic lymphohistiocytosis uh, infliximab. And the for autoimmune hemolytic anemia or thrombocytopenia, uh, corticosteroid, either IV or PO. And the l -tromb l or other oral uh, thrombopoietin uh, receptor agonist could be used for IVIG and the corticosteroid refractory immune thrombocytopenia. Immune related cardiovascular toxicities include myocarditis, pericarditis, arrhythmia, heart failure, vasculitis, and the venous thromboembolism. This cardiac toxicity is very rare, occurring less than 0.1%, but they are life threatening. Venous thromboembolism, like a DVT or pulmonary embolism, is more common. There is no clear evidence of benefit with routine EKG or troponin measurements during the immunotherapy. The symptoms of suspected immune myocarditis include new chest pain, palpitation, shortness of breath, syncope or near syncope, and the leg edema. And the management uh, include uh, workup 
and the intubation for all grade cardiac toxicities. Of course, hold uh, immune checkpoint inhibitors. Just for G1, mild case may consider resuming once normalized, but with a great precaution. All patients need to be admitted, especially when they have uh, the arrhythmia, heart block, uh, to the CCUs. And the cardiologist consultation obtained a tr serial troponin, EKG monitoring, echocardiogram, cardiac MRI, and the cardiac gallium 68 dot the top PET scan uh, or even endomyocardial biopsy is considered. If the acute coronary syndrome, then invasive or CT coronary angiogram is done. For immune myocarditis, you give a high dose of methylprednisone, solimedrol, one gram IV per day for uh, three days. If there is no response, then add a tocilizumab, mycophenolate, infliximab, or even anti-thymocyte globulin. And to consider abatobab and alemtuzumab in life-threatening cases. If responded to corticosteroid, such as uh, uh, evidenced by troponin reduction by less than 50% from the peak, no congestive failure, no ventricular arrhythmia, or complete heart block, at the end of day three, then uh, patients can can have oral uh, prednisone with a weekly reduction at 10 mg per day. And the weekly EKG and troponin monitoring during steroid win is indicated. Almost all patients need to stop immune checkpoint inhibitor permanently. Venous thromboembolism is much more common and the four uh, DVT, you can continue the uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor with the anticoagulation therapy. Grade 3 uh, means patients develop uncomplicated pulmonary embolism. You hold the uh, uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor temporarily and may resume after risk and benefits are considered. You admit the patient's manage according to the guidelines. In G4 is a massive pulmonary embolism, life-threatening consequences. Duration of anticoagulation therapy is to continue while on immunotherapy and to consider six months, six more months after completion of immunotherapy. And the uh, DVT prophylaxis in high-risk patients may be offered. Immune-related ocular toxicities uncommon, which include uveitis, iritis, episcleritis, or Sika syndrome, dry eyes. Immune checkpoint inhibitors can be continued as most cases are very mild and manageable with topical corticosteroids. For Sika syndrome, uh, Sjogren's uh, syndrome uh, workup may be uh, necessary with the ANA and the serology test. Pilocarpine or hydroxychloroquine may be considered for Sika syndrome. Corticosteroids only for severe cases. Infusion reaction is very rare, except the abelumab, occurring about 25% of uh, patients, but mostly uh, 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 G1 or G2. Over G3, uh, tox the infusion reaction is less than 1%. But the premedication with the Benadryl and the acetaminophen is used for abelumab for the first four cycles. Mild infusion reaction requires no intervention for moderate reaction, interrupt infusion, and slow the infusion rate. And you may administer IV fluid, Benadryl, acetaminophen, or other analgesics for pain. For high-grade reaction, permanently stop, uh, hold, stop the uh, therapy and give IV corticosteroid. Rechallenging with a different immune checkpoint inhibitors may be considered after infusion reaction. What about the fertility? An effective birth control during and for the at least five months after immunotherapy is advised. This is the Maine Health Cancer Care Center where I'm currently working at. And this is the picture of Kennebunk Port nearby. So beautiful and peaceful. I like to read the poem of King David to all cancer patients. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. 
the Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Thank you for watching.